Hey, what's up guys? So this is gonna be video two of putting the twin together. So um, just a few changes from yesterday. Nothing's happened here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and of course do a once over cleaning, make sure this is all perfectly uh, clean and fresh. So um, this guy was in the freezer. And the reason, well actually I put this all together yesterday. So this is the center section um, that holds the uh, cranks together. So this is two solid billet sections. Um, so this is center section that holds the cranks together. They're in the freezer and the reason I do that is because if these bearings are gonna be wider, th these bearings are gonna slip on this crank a lot easier if these are cold. So um, just wanna go over a couple things. So these are Polini uh, Evolution bearings. These are about as good as you can get when it comes to um, most your builds here or up to this stage at least. These base plates are what are what are gonna hold the cylinder on. So a couple things that I've done since yesterday, um, installed the stage six billet water pump. It's pretty sweet, uh, pretty sweet extra add-on because the stock one's pretty puny. Comes with a nice billet gear as well. So this is only gonna be on Piaggio factory liquid cooled bikes. This is not something you can just add to a Typhoon or something like that. The other thing I've done, um, use assembly lube, installed the uh, brand new, Brand new seal, Melosi seal, and the bearing for the axle. I figured do that now since I get on a press, it'd be a lot, heck of a lot easier than doing it with the cylinders on. So, also, um, how to go ahead and tap this this here for vacuum, um, or this is going to run the fuel pump. I may or may not use it, but I figured now's the time to do it. So, the way this is going to go together, basically, once uh, I'm going to heat up this case just a little bit and then I'm gonna drop these bearings in. Okay, these bearings are cold so the, di the, the outer diameter should shrink down just enough and the aluminum should expand a little bit to drop these guys in. I typically freeze these and then I just lightly press them in. That's my method. Some people have different ways of doing it. That's how I do it. So I'm gonna press in this one side. I'm gonna get the bearing in and the bearing in place. Then basically your next step or my next step, this thing's a little awkward to work with because it's actually a lot heavier than it looks, but this guy, do, 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 do. It's gonna go like this. So once I get the bearing in place, this is gonna get Honda Bond. This whole thing will get covered with Honda Bond, right? And I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use my crank puller to pull this crank into this section, and, and I'll do that next. I'll show you guys how that works. So this is kind of a, an extensive. This is kind of not exactly how you would do your scooter because this is twice what what a normal person would do. Um, but basically. Showing you how this all goes together. So this whole area will get Honda bonded as well. Um, I, this, these cranks are all Honda bonded in, splitting the center section um, is all Honda bonded together. I've checked the cranks, they're super true. But basically um, this, and, and if you do one of these guys, go ahead and put uh, blue Loctite on this. But this whole section, every single ceiling surface will get perfectly clean. Um, I'm gonna go over it. Uh, like crazy and then hit it all with Honda Bond just smear it around super thin let it get a little bit tacky um, And then I'll go ahead and, and use my crank puller to pull this section in so once this piece and this piece are together um, Once that those two pieces are together then um, since it all gets bolted together as one unit um, Then once that gets together the other bearing will go on this side as well all clean so all this prep will happen beforehand um, the bearings the bearings will be the first thing to go in that's my next step then after that just double triple check everything honda bond it i'm going to pull this section in and then i'm going to pull this section in once that's all locked together i'm going to have this complete unit sitting here all right it's going to sit like this this guy's going to sit here effectively or essentially i should say and this guy is going to sit over here on this side, that whole unit's gonna go together. So um, bearings are gonna go in next. Make sure they're pushed in all the way, pressed in properly. I'm gonna get these a little bit colder. Once those bearings go in, clean the surfaces, um, all, I'll just double check everything, hit it with air, make sure it's super, super clean, let it dry off, hit it with Honda Bond, and then these two sections are gonna go together. Once those sections are together, then the next step, is to take these base plates again, clean them because these were used, clean them really good with the brake cleaner, then hit them with air, let them dry. Same with these surfaces, and then it's gonna get base plate one and base plate two. Once those guys go on, um, then of course the pistons will get installed, the cylinders will go on, and these are my used cylinders from last year, but they've been heavily, heavily ported. Um, new rings, new pistons, new bearings as well. So um, basically the only thing that hasn't been touched on this motor, um, 
how's it been how's it been modified or changed or rebuilt on this motor since last year is just this out these two outer billet pieces the cylinders have been ported the cases are new cases that have been remachined and reported the water pump is a new billet water pump so so the whole thing's been gone through top to bottom so i'm expecting to get another 10 uh, 10 horse or something hopefully put around like 40 wheel horse or something but again this is running on pump fuel this isn't a race fuel motor this isn't this is something that i i can drive like 50 60 70 um 80 miles no problem so um that's kind of what i'm going with this bike it's not an all-out drag bike if it was it wouldn't have a um i wouldn't be running a lot of the parts i'm running i'd be running race fuel i'd have this compression and squish cranked way up um, but i actually want to take this thing and ride it uh, like a normal bike so this is part two kind of showing you where i'm at what i've done um Again, I need to re-clean all this stuff. Anytime I do something, I go through and, and, and just hit it again and clean it again. Like when I installed this fitting up here, this fitting, okay, I had to thread and tap it, drill and tap it, and then I used Honda Bond to seal those threads up. Once that's done, I hit it with brake cleaner, cleaned it off really well, and then I hit it with air. All right, guys, so here we are. Um, <clears throat> both these cases have been Honda Bonded. Both sides have been Honda Bonded. I've got the bearing pressed in this side just like I, I did the same thing on this guy, K bearings pressed in. I've got some assembly lube on there. Surfaces are clean again. So every time you do this, make sure to re-clean it. So, so what I have going on is this is the Tusk crank puller tool. Um, this is, you can find it on different websites. We sell them as well. And then I've got two bars here. I'll take the camera off to show you guys. Um, those two bars are gonna basically disperse the stress um, of pulling the crank in um, on the side of the cases. So. So what I have going on here with this tool, it's a little bit dark for some reason, but basically this is how this guy works. It grabs onto this crank and you're putting, you're not putting any stress on the inside. You're just putting stress on the outside of the cases to pull this crank in. So my center, my, this is a little bit different of course, because my center section is one unit, but all I'm doing is pulling it in. So what you want to do is get this thing all set up, make sure it's Hana bonded as well. And then you just, I just take one hand and just kind of make sure these dowels are squared up to make sure everything matches. So <clears throat> again, prep is everything on this. It's taken me a long time to learn um, how to take my time and how to prep it properly and whatnot. So clean, 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 make sure you get it cleaned really well. Um, I use brake cleaner, it, does, it, it evaporates really fast. So basically <clears throat> what you're gonna do now is now, this is not pressed together, it's still loose, okay? So what I do, a lot of guys use um, a lot of guys will use sockets or whatever impact drivers. I like using a wrench just because I can kind of feel better uh, what the what the motor's doing and what the crank's doing. So again, there's lots of different tool companies that make this piece, um, and this is just one of the brands. It's a pretty simple design. So of course, make sure when your your cranks, make sure your one crank is up here and it's not going to get stuck down here. Of course, um, and what you're going to do is just I just kind of hold it. A little bit in place and this is wet because this was in the freezer because i'm trying to get the um, cranks going a little bit easier so what you do is hold it like this and you're just going to slowly crank it around it should go in really easy so you just kind of rock it back and forth until you find that spot where the locating dowels go into each other So this is how it should go together. The towel's not in there. So get this out here. So again, you're just gonna slowly take this and this is gonna pull the one case half into the other. And you'll see the Honda bond as well. It's gonna be in this area. It's gonna start squishing out pretty soon. So you don't need a reef on this, you don't need to be crazy. It's gonna be very clear when this thing stops and bottoms out. So there's just, what I like to do is take my towel afterwards and just get any of this loose Honda Bond that's squished out. Getting this loose Honda Bond that's squished out here before it dries, kind of clean that all up. And again, it's gonna be in the intake area too, so you wanna clean that out as well. That's where the two seams kind of join together. Honda Bond, you don't have to go crazy with. I just do a super thin layer, just covering it, I kind of smeared around with my finger, um, and then uh, <clears throat> and then go together. So this one I gotta move along kind of fast because the, I, there's one set of bolts to connect this whole engine together. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do the other side real quick as well. And 
And I'll show you real quick how I do the Honda Bond um, on this guy too. So, so I've already hit this with brake cleaner, the whole entire thing. And this, uh, these are Fellini Evo bearings. So what I do with Honda Bond, <clears throat> wherever it went on my desk. So I take the Honda Bond, let's see here. I'll show you guys. So I just take this, use gloves of course, always use gloves. And I just go right like this along all these surfaces. And like I said, I probably go a little bit heavier on Honda Bond than what you probably should do, but you just want to get it just enough to where it's just covering the aluminum and gets tacky. So this isn't a giant glob. You know, back when you were a kid and you are putting a go-kart together and you use like a whole tube of RTV to seal something up, that's not what you're doing with this. You just want a super thin layer because what's going to happen is it's going to dry. And when it dries, it's going to squish into the, like for instance, it's going to squish into here, which is where your water pump is. So you want to get every edge of every surface that's going to be mating um, your cases together. So just go over it, it's nice and smooth. So I'm going to let that sit, let that sit kind of tacky. All right guys, now we're going to pull the other side in and again this the first the, the first portion you watched that's just doing this side that's all you would do on a single cylinder but obviously being a twin um, is twice the amount of work so again we have the crank puller here this pulls a crank in we have our two braces here which are going to put the force on the case itself this whole um, inside has been covered with honda bond as well so um, clean surfaces covered with honda bond so i'm just going to again you've got your locating dowels here and you want to make sure um, those are in line so um, go ahead, go on. Gonna go ahead and start pulling this guy in. So again, I use a wrench. You can use whatever you want. You may not even like this method, but this has always worked for me. So you see a lot of people use crank or presses and hammers and all kinds of funky stuff. This tool is designed specifically for cranks, and it's not putting any weird force in any weird spots. Um, so this is. This is the way you want to do your uh, do your crank installs. So, even if the tools are kind of spendy, you know, hundred bucks or whatever, split it with some buddies. Um, split it with some buddies and go in. It, it's worth it. The, they're worth their weight in gold. So you're going to mess up your crank if you use a, a press or something else. So it may work in the meantime, but it's going to fail prematurely. So again, make sure your rod's not stuck in a funky spot, um, and just double check yourself. Make sure you got your Honda Bond and all that stuff in all the areas. And I just kind of again, just kind of eyeball it to get it close. Don't force anything, just roll it around slow. And as you can see, this gap starts to close itself up. This is super simple, really easy. Um, as long as you just need a little bit of tools and just take the time to do it right, it's not hard, it's not expensive, um, it's, it's relatively easy to do. So let's do that till it snugs up. And then what I do, now it's all together. So now this thing's pulled together tight. Um, so what I'm gonna do with this bike now, Take these bolts. <clears throat> okay, got a little bit of Honda or a little bit of uh, thread lock on these bolts here. Allen's, drive them all in. A little tight against that brace there. There we go. have it looks like there's how many more we got one here one here so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten all your bolts down and once you snug your bolts all up then you can take this piece off I like doing it with this piece on um, just because I know it's all together and it's all tight so once you tighten all these bolts up and whether it be a, a Dio Elite Zuma whatever it's all gonna be the same theory um, this Piaggio has uh, quite a bit more bolts than um, some of the other motors, but again, you can see kind of the Honda Bond seeping out here. I'm going to go ahead and clean this off, clean that off. Um, 
and those are the cooling um, cooling spots for the cylinders. So now those cranks are pulled together, they're gonna uh, get bolted together. Um, once that's all locked in, then I'm gonna start putting the cylinders together. Theoretically, it should go together the same as my last engine, but um, I'll go ahead and uh, update you guys on that. That'll be another video, putting the cylinders on, checking the squish, making sure the pistons and rings and everything are on right. So this is just, all this stuff is gonna apply to, an, to a Zuma Dio or any other two-stroke uh, scooter engine, but this at least gives you guys an idea of how it goes together, what's done, how to prep, and the tools that are required. So to do all this work, the only tool you need is a gasket scraper, carb clean, a couple of wrenches and sockets, um, Allen's of course, and then this this uh, Tusk crank tool. And it'll go together properly and this thing should run forever as long as it's put together right. So again, stay tuned, I'll make another video. Uh, this is video two, I'll make video three on the cylinders and putting all that stuff together. So um, if you guys have any questions, post below and uh, appreciate you guys watching and sharing and letting the channel grow.